So the methods that we use to grow seaweed here at Queen's University um, are exactly the same methods that are being used currently um, by SEVA in France and also by NUIG in Galway. So we're mirroring these experiments across three different macroalgae pilot sites. Uh, the process starts with us going down to the beach and collecting fertile seaweed that's local, that's native to the area. Um, all the seaweeds that we're growing, we're making sure that we're growing local species all the time. Um, so we go to the beach, collect uh, our fertile material. It's brought back to the lab um, where we induce it to release the gametes that are stored within that fertile material. So they are released into seawater and we can actually capture those and store them in flasks. Uh, we have a custom built hatchery which is kept at 10 degrees all year round. Um, we also have an incubator where we can store our flasks and that's a little bit of a backup. So if anything does happen to our hatchery temperature, we have a backup in our incubator which also will store at 10 degrees. The flasks will stay there for anywhere from a month right up to several years. We can actually keep the spores um, in sort of vegetative state where they will start to grow but they won't become fertile. So the key is when we actually make the spores become fertile. Um, so we do that by putting them under blue light. Um, the gametes will then produce eggs and sperm. Um, and that takes roughly a month. And once that starts to happen, we can actually then spray that material onto string. Um, so our string cedars are roughly sort of 40 centimetres in length, but that cedar will hold about 40 metres of string. So we will spray all over the cedars and then put them into large tanks in our hatchery um, where the water is kept cool all year round and those will then start to grow. It only takes around about a month before they're ready to then go out into the sea. So once that's happened, we'll take them out to our long lines, which are constructed in Strangford Loch. Uh, the long lines are 100 metres in length, and we currently have six of those. Um, and we'll try and grow different species on different long lines. So the species that we're currently cultivating here are Laminaria digitata uh, and Saccharina latissima. We are hoping to do a third species, uh, Alaria esculenta, next year. Um, we didn't have any stock, unfortunately, of that this year, but that will be happening next year for us. Um, so we take our cedars out to the long lines. The long lines can physically pass through the middle of the square cedar, and the string will then unwind along the full length of the line. So the cedars, although they're fairly small, um, they will actually cover, two and a half cedars will cover one full 100 metre long line. Uh, we then will leave the seaweed, we'll periodically come back to sample it just to make sure that it's growing as we want it to and to get length and data measurements from it as well. Um, and then hopefully June, July time would be the optimal time to harvest. Um, so that will involve going out and basically stripping the lines completely of all the seaweed that's grown. Uh, we will keep those lines and use them next year so they can be reused. Uh, the material that then comes off the lines can be tested for its viability as a biofuel. Um, primarily in Northern Ireland, that's probably going to be via anaerobic digestion um, to produce biogas.